Preston Physics Grade 11 Electricity and Magnetism Note 2 Electric Fields and Amount of Charge In physics, when we're looking at electric fields, we're looking at things that are almost like a gravitational field, but these are charges that are making a field. So we have arrows that represent these fields. They always go out of the positive and into the negative. That's our first rule for drawing these. Now, if we were to look at this together, so when we draw it separately, it just looks out and in. When we draw it together, it's going to look something like this. Now, the density of these fields, or how many arrows there actually are, depends on the charge. So let's say we had a 1Q charge, and it had 8 arrows. If we then had a 2Q charge, or twice the charge, it would have twice the amount of arrows. So it would then have 16 arrows instead of 8. The last thing that we're going to look at is what you've already seen when I've drawn the electric fields here. Field lines can never cross. We can never have two field lines going across each other. So something like this, a straight line across, and then a squiggly line where it crosses there, and then we cross here. That can never happen. The last thing we're going to look at with electric fields is called Coulomb's Law. Now this is a way to calculate a force of attraction or repulsion caused by charges. Now when you look at the equation for force of an electric field, it's very similar to our gravitational force. We have Fe equals K, a constant, times Q1 and Q2, the charges of two points, and then the separation distance. When we look at our constants though, the gravitational constant is very, very small, and the charge constant is very, very large. Now when we look at the amount of charge that's in an object or a point, we measure it in coulombs, or C. Now a coulomb is just kind of like a bucket of charge, or a whole bunch of electrons. We have one coulomb, it's made up of 6.24 times 10 to the 18 electrons. So there's a whole bunch of charge. Looking at this, we can find out that the charge of one electron is negative, because we know electrons are a negative charge, 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. The next thing we're going to look at is how to calculate the amount of charge in an object. It's a very simple calculation where we have Q, or the charge in coulombs, is equal to N times E. N is the number of electrons that's either surplus or deficit, if it's a negative, times the charge of the electrons. When we're looking at the first example, we're trying to find out how many extra electrons this charged balloon has. We know the charge of the balloon is negative 1.2816 times 10 to the negative 18 coulombs. We know the charge of an electron is negative 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19. So when we rearrange our equation from above, we get N equals Q over E. We substitute our values in, and we find that we have 8 extra electrons. This should always, always, always be a whole number. We cannot have decimals when we're finding the number of electrons that are in excess or deficit. This is a very important part. The questions associated with this note are 2 and 3 from your yellow duotang.